on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. Facebook is trying to reel us in with air quote new features. We tell you everything you need to know about MVCs, aka more valuable conversions in Google Ads. Thankfully, Shep writes these show titles instead of Google because there's new big and possibly bad changes afoot in Google's web titles. All on today's show. You know what time it is. It's officially Marketing O'Clock. We bring you all the digital marketing news of the week, powered by the digital marketing community. If you want to join the conversation, hit us up. We are at Marketing O'Clock everywhere, and you can join our community on Discord at community.marketingoclock.com. We record every week from the Cypress North Studios in beautiful Buffalo, New York, to bring you our famous Friday news show. You can subscribe to our show at youtube.marketingoclock.com or wherever you consume your podcast. Head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every article we cover straight to your inbox. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shep. I'm Jess Budd. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on August 27th, 2021. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for another episode. My heart is so full today because we're back with a fullish team. We have Jess back and we have Caleb in the house. Caleb, we were just lost without you. <laughs> no, you guys were fine. Jess, what do you have going on in your world this week? So I just got back from vacation, which we don't need to get into the fact that I went on the same vacation that yeah. I just went on because Greg already uh, blew me up I for that. I kind of do want to get into that fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So I went to the beach and um, I did something. We went to the same beach that we went to before uh, down in Virginia. Like but a we month did, ago. Yeah, like yes. a month ago. Okay. And, and you don't go anywhere else like all year. Like you barely take trips. No, but just we, to be clear, we booked this one while we were down there the but, last time. But, but, to be fair, the, the beach is pretty close, right? No, it's like it's like ten hours away. Oh, so we stop halfway in Gettysburg, which we did. Again. Yeah, you made the same stop both times. We did because it's so easy. But to be fair, your last trip was maybe like what eight months ago? No, it was like two months ago in June. <laughs> and while we were there during kiddos' nap time, we were like, let's book it again. And Chris, my husband, just went downstairs to the lobby and booked it again. But we did something new this time. Unbe- it's unbelievable. It's not. It's it's like a great trip it's- with the time. <laughs> A 12-hour drive stopping in <laughs> Gettysburg with somebody under two years old. You know, he loves what Civil War psycho. history. He loves everything. He loves everything. And can I just get your opinion? Which <laughs> You know what he might love more than Gettysburg? A kid's museum. <laughs> <laughs> we take him to those here at home. Listen, okay, he loves the beach, right? And this is what I wanted to talk about. We go to the ocean. He's in a swim diaper. Swim diapers are amazing. They let kids be in mm, diapers. I don't in think the they water. really block the pee, but okay. They don't if the kid is dry. We had an incident with that. But what I want to know, because when I told my mom I did this, she looked at me like I was a psychopath. The kid's wet, they poop, hard to wipe off, right? So I just like took his diaper off and washed him in the ocean. Yeah, that's okay. And like, yeah. Okay, thank you. My mom looked at me like I I was a nut. I would just be panicking. Yeah, I'm not going to bring him back up to the blanket and change his diaper. Thanks for putting him on blast. This is (laughs) disgusting. And I'm calling the police. I think I'd just be panicking. Those swim diapers don't do anything. Every baby is peeing in the ocean, okay? They literally do not work. Yeah, I mean, we're all peeing in the ocean, (laughs) for being real. (laughs) Okay, I feel better. Thank you. Okay, Greg, did you go on vacation? Anything to update I did, and after that how gross do you want my story <laughs> can i go gross on okay that? yeah okay so we, i went camping like camping camping in a tent no electricity camping and we're trying to make it three nights right and my kids love camping and i let them pick out whatever food they want so that they like it enjoy it, and let them like basically eat whatever they want when they're outside in the woods so that they like hopefully like the outdoors mm-hmm. and one night my daughter ate a little bit too much and um, again, I guess uh, uh, earmuffs if you if you get sick <laughs> if you don't like like uh, gross stuff. But I'm just like ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> too late. She ate too much and is like, I don't feel good at all. And I'm like, oh no. And so we start going, and she starts you know getting some of the food back out and just crying and like, but she's standing stiff as a board. So I try to like bend her over so she doesn't like yeah. you know get I'm the food scared. back out all over. <laughs> And she's like, it hurts when you do it. So I'm holding her diagonally so that she doesn't <laughs> bend over. And she's just like, everything she ate is not, no longer in her stomach. And she looks at me and she's crying profusely. Aww. And she looks at me and goes, Daddy, 
I don't like this one bit. <laughs> and I was just, I started laughing. Like, but like, nobody does. Nobody does, girl. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. That's oh. why plumbing is nice and you don't go camping. Yeah. Caleb, what's going on with you? Well, I'm going on a little vacation this weekend. I'm going to Staten Island to visit a friend. And instead of getting a hotel, because hotels are expensive, I was like, let me be modern. Let me do an Airbnb. And this Airbnb that me and my friends got has some weird rules. And like, they're oh, no. some of them are normal, like don't smoke, don't party, you know, don't be loud. And then there's like, don't cook in the kitchen that's in the Airbnb. What? What? <laughs> yeah. And another one is like, um, don't use the dishwasher after nine. Which is weird because if you can't cook, why would you be using the dishwasher? Sounds like there's like a ghost inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you turn it on at 10, the thing's coming out and it's going to eat you. Yeah, so I guess I'll be eating nothing but uh, restaurant food in Staten Island for three days. So that, How would they fun. know what time you ran the dishwasher? I don't want to find out. I, I challenge you. <laughs> it's probably just loud. That sounds a little spooky. You'll have to update us when you get back. Yeah, I will. Um, I was just going to say real quick, we got this amazing new water machine here at work this week. <laughs> and there's... It's so awesome. So we drink a lot of, we call them cold pops here, <laughs> the flavored sparkling water. And the reason we got the machine is because we got little flavor drops and you can have sparkling water. And you can also have, they have cold, hot, extra hot, and ambient. <laughs> <laughs> and there is one person in the office who chose to drink ambient. And for the record, <laughs> ambient is room temperature. Yeah, I didn't even know. <laughs> Until I asked someone, I was like, I've heard of ambient noise, not ambient water. <laughs> Jess Bud goes to the machine <laughs> and chooses to fill up her glass with ambient water. It's nice. No, I tried it. It is not nice. It is gross. You're, You're going to a machine that the water's cold and then you have to heat it up to get it to be room temperature. You're, 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 what is wrong with so you? Yeah. What is, is it like warm or what? It's like, room it's temp. Neither it's here way, nor there. Yeah. If you pour yourself a cold glass, you take too long to drink it. It's ambient anyway. So I am just skipping a step. It's delicious. You're adding stuff by heating it back up. The best way I can describe it is it's, it's, it's uncomfortable temperature, yeah. right? No. It's a, it's a, it's an uncomfortable temperature. If I was desperate for water, like don't get me wrong, I'm really thirsty. I'm gonna drink it, but I would never choose to drink room temperature water. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's like tap water. It's not good. I'm sorry. This has just been like put Jess on blast time. We also have a I'm tap for too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh it's not good. And Greg, I believe you have some housekeeping to get to this week. Wait. Oh, yeah. So a quick update. And I'll, I'll put some of the disclaimers on the website as well. Um, we at one point had been associated with the Search Engine Journal podcast network that is uh, now defunct. Um, and now just a little bit of housekeeping. I am currently involved in the SMX Steering Committee. So Third Door Media, um, helping with put together some of the shows and programming and all that, and also maybe helping out on the uh, search engine land side as well. So um, this is nothing to do with marketing a clock. Uh, there is no interest from search Third Door Media in marketing clock, and it's still very much um, independent. And you know we're still going to be pulling stories from everywhere, just like we did when we were on Search Engine yeah. Journal, for better, for worse, maybe for worse. <laughs> um, so just of note there, um, a little bit of bias on my side, but you know I don't care. Yeah, and congrats I, on your new gig, as if you didn't have <laughs> enough going on. But we're going to spit it straight anyway, like we always do. And we have another exciting update for you guys. We have new stickers in stock. And first, we have a couple sticker packs to release. This week, we are re releasing the PPC pack. Jess has not seen these yet, although she no. was part of the planning, so none of them are gonna be that surprising. But take a look. So these are really awesome. First, we have <laughs> um, the normal Marketing O'Clock logo. You gotta have that on your computer. We also have um, a little tombstone for BMM, Gone Too Soon. And then we have a Jess Bud original. I can't see queries now. The data's gone. That was beautiful. You got me to sing on the podcast. Okay, um, save that clip. Then got we it. have a Greg Finn idea that I believe you <laughs> dreamed up while you were mowing the lawn. Yes, so true. I always picture this guy mowing the lawn. <laughs> but he is Mr. Raisin Budgets. It, it's a raisin. It's a raisin. Pointing upward, saying raisin budgets. Yeah. Very clever. And then, of course, 
because we have a great story about her this week, actually. Our ads liaison, Jenny Marvin, we have a coin with her likeness on it, and it says, In Jenny, we, tw- in Jenny we trust. <laughs> with her approval. E- 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 Pluribus Marvin. <laughs> that is the funniest thing I've ever seen. I was not privy to that one. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, so if you want to claim your own sticker pack, all you have to do is go to our Twitter. We're going to have a tweet with a picture of the sticker pack ready for you, and all you have to do is retweet it. We will DM you and ask you your shipping information. You can get one of these for free. Can I keep this one? Because yes. I don't use Twitter. You can. And we have more stickers coming your way if you're an SEO fan next week. Getting into the news this week, Google Ads announced that advertisers will soon be able to adjust conversion values for smart bidding. Some people have already seen this in their accounts, but now it's apparently rolling out to everyone in the coming weeks. So the value of a conversion can be adjusted based on location, device, or audience. The example shows that you can multiply your conversion value, but it's a drop down. So I don't know if you'll be able to divide two. That could be interesting. And these rules will also be used by maximize conversion value and target ROAS to optimize your bids in real time. This is available for smart bidding search, shopping display, as I said, over the next few weeks. I want to talk to you guys about this because I'm of two minds of it. I can see it's kind of like a bid adjustment for smart bidding is kind of what I'm thinking of it as. And I don't like it for e-commerce because it feels like fake data, right? Yeah. Like that feels e-com weird. e Yeah. Dollars. But then it's there for target ROAS, so I felt like that wasn't a good fit, but it could also kind of make target ROAS work for lead-based accounts if you're saying some people are worth more. Yeah, I mean, I I think one example that this could be beneficial to is if you're trying to hit maybe a new audience or, or, or maybe you're trying to remarket to people that you've already paid for and trying to bring them back. That could be something as well where you're like, Let's say, oh, it, it's somebody whose transactions um, are, you know, under one transaction historically. And for those folks, we care about that being, you know, X multiplier for yeah. it because you're looking for for new folks. So yeah. there are some examples I could see for, where this being really beneficial for local, I'd imagine as well. Like if you run something that's a local shop and you could say, um, you know, a specific city or zip or something has a higher, higher, like, again, the conversion counts more. That probably makes sense, too. So, you know, I, by device, I don't know. I guess if, if, you know, let's say that you're an app or something and you know that there's one that the iPhone or something, I mean, you probably just set up different campaigns. Yeah. Though. That's I like, was yeah. thinking for B2B, like, we always set up different campaigns if we want to do something on mobile usually because it's a lower conversion rate. But with this, you could say a desktop conversion is worth more because bid adjustments don't work. I don't know. It's something for people to test. (laughs) That's a great idea. Thanks. I've just been thinking about this all day because I can't decide if I like it or not. And I wish you could do this with real money. Like your money's worth more at certain stores or your money, you get paid more if you're talking to Microsoft support about the bad close variant matching for those hours, wouldn't that be great? You would be rich. Yeah. (laughs) So I feel like the real world world should adopt this, but for now, we'll see. Let us know if you give it a test. What else is happening this week? All right, next up here in the news, things are about to get real. Or as The Verge's Ashley Carmen puts it, the TikTokification of Facebook products continues. Facebook announced (laughs) last week, but it was after we recorded the show, that they are testing reels on the platform here in the States. They've already been testing this elsewhere, Canada, India, Mexico. So this is just an extension of that original test, but obviously you don't expand a test if you don't believe in something. So I I would expect this to go wide sooner rather than later. To reiterate, we are talking about Facebook, not Instagram. So you will be able to cross post your Instagram reels to Facebook if you're part of this test, but more importantly, it will be a feature within the Facebook app as well. So you can watch and create reels directly within the Facebook platform and Chef is just like looking at me and smiling and shaking her head. (laughs) So Facebook, this is a quote from the article, Facebook says nearly half of time spent on the app is dedicated to watching videos and that Reels is growing especially quickly, end quote. But I just, I get that people are watching videos, but videos are not necessarily Reels, whether or not they say that they're growing. And I just struggle with this a little bit because I know who is on Facebook and I always joke that it's my mom, but that's who it is, right? Like they're not the TikTok generation. They don't really understand Reels and I don't know if they want to. I don't know if they care. So 
on like a personal level and a user level, eh, whatever, but I could potentially see this working for like small businesses on the marketing side, just if they have to, the time to put into it, because I do feel like Facebook is a place that people still turn to, to look up small business information in particular and see when folks are open. So it'd be a nice way to kind of add your own flair, your branded spin yeah. to your content. So that's worth a test to me, but I, I don't know. Outside of that, like I don't think users are, I don't know. And honestly, I feel like Reels could make people who are on Facebook already go to TikTok who aren't already there because it's like Ooh. everyone's just like repurposing like stuff. Yeah. yeah. For me, I was like, TikTok, who cares? And then I see them on Instagram and I'm like, oh, these are kind of cool. And then eventually I set one up. I know. And it, it seems like it's going away from where they have strength. And it's like you have a strength in, in, in typing in groups, right? And you have a text post. And then they also had Facebook Watch where they get actual TV shows. And then this is the polar opposite of that yeah you're not a tv sh- like they're going after youtube and then like oh let's just completely turn around and try to get people not to consume long-form content and none of this ever makes sense to me but i sound like a broken record at this no point. yeah because you've said that about youtube with shorts as well that their strength is longer form content so i don't mm-hmm. know like i said if you're a small business maybe play with this i think that that might make sense obviously test everything and it is only a test right yeah. now but meh you know who joined tiktok this week not me taylor swift Taylor Swift. Get out. So are you going to join now? Oh, I know you're I'm like on. on it, but it's not you. It's it's your baby, right? No, it's me. Fun fact, I broke Taylor Swift news to shop this week. No, he oh. didn't. What? Yes, I no did. Way. It wasn't news. Wow. He told me that some piece of merch that she wore in her debut TikTok had sold out, but there was a dupe somewhere else. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. I brought some news. Thanks, Greg. You're wow. Welcome. Do you have any news for us? <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> Other than that. Okay, sit back, folks. We have an update from the title tags that we talked about last week. So in case you missed it, A, how dare you? (laughs) And B, there was way more funk than usual for the titles in the search engine results pages. They're just super funky since this change that we saw happen last week. And Lily Ray has been leading the way on this. And she notes that she saw way more volatility than usual with lots of strange examples, including uh, last week we talked about it, hero image alt tags showing up as the web title, which is what Google has, that blue clickable link there, a bunch of H1s pulling, and then a bunch of just bad examples all around. And so it got even worse since we stopped recording last week because one of the most egregious Examples came from Mark Williams Cook at the Taffer Boy on Twitter. And he writes, great job with that title rewrite for the POTUS, Google. And the search was for Joe Biden. And the new improved title tag reads, Vice President Joe Biden dash the White House. Yikes. What is going on? And that's for the president. (laughs) So then Lily found a few other examples. And the search was specifically for Beyonce. And the example of the title drops the word Beyonce from the title tag and instead reads, becomes first black woman to wear iconic Tiffany diamond. Completely drops Queen Bay right off of the title. Honestly, talk about how dare you. I don't know which one's worse. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, you don't want the Bayhive after you. No. Okay. So anyway, it was a whole mess. There was a bunch of other examples. There are some that were fairly egregious too from maybe a health standpoint where there was an example from Jenny Hearn looking for flu, just information on the flu. And the, it was a page about the flu, but the title tag jumped and just shows flu vaccinations. If you're looking for the flu, you're probably not looking for a vaccination. You're probably trying to figure out what you're trying to do and so maybe you're missing this which was from an actual official site i believe um the nhs so a lot of really strange examples showing with the web titles there and so lily went out and again showcased all this information to the public and everybody just not everybody but seos were just straight seoing and they're like not new Mm -hmm. this is not new this has been around since 2008 2010, 2013, this isn't new. Google can rewrite this. And Lily, bless her soul, was just like, I know. Here's an article I wrote in 2013 and so on and so forth. But 
It was pretty crazy because she's just trying to help. And then all these SEOs are all over. And she ended up, and I saw one person even agreeing with Google pulling the vice president for Biden. And there was somebody that said, I'm kind of with Google here. The content is not very helpfully structured to infer that he is actually president now and no longer vice president or senator from Delaware. And Lily responds and says, it literally says Joe Biden, the president in the title tag. The title tag has existed for 20 years for this very purpose. It shouldn't be complicated. And I'm team Lily. We're a Lily Stan podcast here. And Lily went out and put out a funny meme as well and says, a good summary of SEO Twitter this week. Thanks to the meme magician, Izzy on fire. And there's a picture of a bird saying, here's a SERP update that's quite interesting. And then there's a big... That's not new behind it. And it's a big raven saying, it's always been like this. That's not new. <laughs> and it's like, that's the SEO community. Can everyone relax? So, I know this poor little bird's face. Okay, so I, I've got an update on this here. But a quick PSA to all you SEOs. Team Paid wants you. You know search engines. We we want you. If you want to remo- remove yourself from the abuse of the SEO community, come to Team Paid. I feel like people... PBZ chat is so helpful. Yes. Like there's only a few people that are negative Nancy. Yeah, I've only been mansplained like a handful of times. Okay, well, I guess it's everywhere then. No, it's most, it is better on PPC chat for sure. So much better. Okay. So then Google came out and put out a new blog post saying how titles are generated. And they talked about an update. So yes, it was newer. And they talked about the fact that, um, 80% 80% of all the, the web titles shown in the search results pages come from the title tag and that they've gone beyond HTML text to create titles for over a decade. Our new system is making even more use of such text. In particular, we are making use of text that humans can visually see when they arrive at a web page. We consider the main visual title or headline shown on the page, content that site owners often place within H1 tags within other header tags, which is made a large and prominent throughout the use of style treatments. So then Lily responded, so what you're saying is dot, 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 the title tag change is new. Justice for Lily. Mic drop, yeah. <laughs> and Danny went on and, and confirmed that it is a new um, change. So this change overall, I don't have a problem with this change in Google adding more if if there's a way to opt out of this, right? If the arguably the two most important people on the globe, or at least in America, let's say, Beyonce, um, Beyonce and Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if their title tags can get messed up through this enhancement, like imagine the little folks out mm-hmm. there, like that's gonna be a problem. And somebody said it best back in 2013, Danny Sullivan over at Search Engine Land when he was writing for the site that he founded. And he wrote, still, Google makes mistakes. That's one reason I wish for years that Google would let site owners have something like a, yes, I'm really sure I want you to use my title tag tag that would let publishers encountering this type of problem finally solve it. Yeah, let us get out of it. If there's a problem, Google, you don't you need support or you need an option to fix this. And, and that's... That's a simple ask. And Danny actually agrees with it, which is the crazy thing. So Danny said this week, he said, that said, I'd love to see a mechanism for site owners to very selectively indicate if there are problematic titles. Like perhaps in Search Console, you could say you really want an HTML title tag used rather than an automatic choice. My thought is that we could perhaps allow a set number per site, maybe five or 10, also with an expiration period. That way people wouldn't make whole scale long-term mistakes accidentally. And I, I agree with that. that Great. That's what we need. And even another step up, you all are sportsters. It should be like the challenge rule in NFL. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. You know Love that rule. Yeah, throw a yellow <laughs> flag yeah. or whatever. Like if you do a review on the challenge and your challenge is upheld, you get to keep that that challenge and you can do it again. So like if you're if, if you go out there and you're like, Oh, I'm the White House and you know, Joe Biden isn't the vice president anymore, can you change it? Then you still get to keep what you came in with the challenge with. So that's my little addition there. But the other kind of heavy side of this is, if you think about it, there, there's no more do no evil, right? Like that that slogan is, is, is way gone. And if you are an SEO trying to optimize in organic, 
you're competing against all the stuff that Rand wrote about back in the day, the zero click searches and all the Google properties and everything like that. You're, you're competing against Google and you're competing against Google ads as well. And it's not like you can go out there and be like, oh, I don't want you bidding on my name. I don't want you bidding on you know my th this term. So you're running ads and then you're changing the title tag and you can't figure out ways to opt out of it. When in reality, whether you like it or not, you are competing with Google. Mm -hmm. Google ads, Google hotel bookings, Google flights, Google local, my business. You're competing against Google and then Google is changing things. And it would be great to have the, like those rose colored glasses on to say, oh, Google, Google's gonna do the right thing. We've seen time and time and time and time and time again, Google getting it wrong and getting it wrong for the president and getting it wrong for Queen Bay. So like, I, I think there has to be an opt out for this. And we really, like, we should demand that. Yeah. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's crazy when you think about it. Like, your competitors can buy your name and whatever title tag can be pulled in for your organic listing, it's just, you would think that somebody has the common sense to enact this rule. Right. And I would think, you know who can probably make a change? A team of Lily Ray, Joe Biden, and Beyonce. Oh. Ooh, the big three. Get them on the case. <laughs> now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up just for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. This week's take of the week comes from Eli Schwartz at 5LE. He's one of those that got the three letter Twitter handle. I don't know how Eli did that, but Eli had a screenshot and he says, this is a pretty funny way to bid on a competitor, SEM Rush. Curious to know whether this works for CTR and, and QS2, a quality score, and click the right. And he's got an example from somebody in the search searching for Moe's. And Stop. first up, there's um, somebody else bidding on the term Moe's. And then next up is SEMrush, the case SEMrush. And the ad says, meh, you could do better. That's the title of the I ad. I love that. And he says, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. Or, or, the SEMrush ad says that. Make sure your competitors aren't. For better visibility online, choose SEMrush, aka SEMrush, instead. 40 plus trillion backlinks, 140 plus geo databases. Really funny. I think that something like funny. that could only work in our industry though. Oh yeah. Like you can't do that with foot cream. No. <laughs> <laughs> foot or cream. like Mexican restaurants like Moe's. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Scholes was a bad tipper. <laughs> Wait, to just combine all of that. <laughs> so we'll see if they leave the ad up, but. Nice find, Eli. Now it's time for this week's ICYMI. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. I see why am I people from Greg of the Year at PPC Greg on Twitter. He says, friendly reminder to hide comments instead of deleting them on your Facebook ads. And I think this is hilarious because one of my guilty pleasures, I should have thought of this for the show, is actually like reading the comments people leave on ads because there's just so many like curmudgeon people on Facebook. Yes. And we're like, we like still have access to old clients that people are commenting like savage things. And I just <laughs> love watching it roll in. It's like so funny, gotta get your popcorn. But yes, hide them, don't delete them because then people are replying and they're even more mad because they mm -hmm. know you're deleting their comments. Yeah, and if you hide, like, they don't see it. And it's just, like, a nice way to be like, oh, yeah. you just go off to your little isolation there. See you later, suckers. Now it's time for this week's pew, pew. lightning round. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. First up in the paid universe this week, there was some drama in the UK with shopping ads. So this was first brought to our attention by at Digital Liam on Twitter. On August 23rd, Liam said, running Google shopping ads in the UK and have recently seen a sharp drop in impressions. You are not alone. A high proportion of UK-based advertisers have seen a drop in impressions, cost and revenue in their PLA campaigns since Friday the 20th. There was a whole thread about what he was seeing and he was right because Ginny Marvin at from her at ads liaison account popped in 
and said, our team uncovered a technical issue that prevented some products from being served via shopping ads since August 20th. As a result, corresponding impressions and clicks have been impacted. The issue is now completely resolved as of 8:24, and Liam agreed he updated us on August 23rd and said that he did see a 75% increase in impressions from the campaigns where the numbers had dropped. So that's good news. So if that impacted your accounts, you probably want to add an annotation, update your clients. The most annoying part about this is it was smart shopping, according to the Search Engine Land article about the drama. So people were probably just freaking out because there's no data in there. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, everybody's like, what is going on? PPC Rachel is in on it. Everybody was. Mark B. Clicky added me. He's like, this is wrong. I'm like, I, I'm not in the UK. I don't, I don't know. Mark B. Clicky? Is that a real name? Yes. Or a PPC name? No, it's a, a Twitter handle. Mark Bassani. Oh, okay. I think he's a listener. I thought he was born like Mike last Clicky. name Clicky. No, Clicky. <laughs> I was like, he was born in this very industry. New. Yeah, they you got to go in a paid search if that's your name. It's like how I thought Alicia Keys, like that was her real name for it's a while. It's not? Nah. <laughs> is it even close? Is it like it, Keystone and they just dropped no, the tone? No, I don't think so. Mm. Are you going to update us? <laughs> yeah, after the next article. <laughs> and from BFF of the show, Andre. Alicia Cook. Yeah, not the same. Oh, she, she should have been, been a chef. chef. <laughs> <laughs> Saving that. <laughs> we are on the same wavelength today. As I was saying, Andrea Cruz92 on Twitter. She should be a captain. <laughs> <laughs> You should be a fish. <laughs> you should be a flower or oh, drugs. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think this works well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get it together, people. She says, new Google Ads UI for setting up campaigns. You can move across the different creation sections with a panel on the left. I haven't, and thanks for tagging us, Andrea, very important. I haven't actually used this, so I don't have anything to say. It looks kind of cool to me how you could jump around on the side, but people are hating it on Twitter. Um, we were looking at setting a campaign up. We were trying to find Performance Max, if it was uh, enabled for a client. I'm like, yes, I, we're, we're looking at everything. And I saw this show up, and I'm like, oh, maybe it's because I went into smart sh- smart campaigns, but this appears to be like for, for anything. Yeah, and people mm. really hate it. So let us know what you think, everyone. And from our ads liaison, from her at ads liaison account, this week Jenny tweeted, advertisers can now make custom columns with search impression share, click impression share, display display impression share, and phone call metrics. Thanks for the feedback at PPC Greg. Now people, this is why you need to be the change. Don't just, you know, rant around. Tag Jenny, be nice, and ask for the change, and it can happen to you because PPC Greg asked for this, like, in August, it wasn't that long ago, and Jenny just made it happen. And Ginny, we trust. Yes. So BBC Greg tweeted and he said, am I going to call my mom and tell her about this? Yes. Will she have a clue what it means? No. <laughs> so <Mom>. relatable. <laughs> and from Valentin Pletzer at Vorticon CMDR on Twitter. Vorticon Commander. He sounds like What's legit. Com- oh, Commander. Right? Live long and prosper. I don't know any of this. What's Vorticon? I'm not like big on Star Wars. Gotta ask Danny right. Sullivan. May the force be with you, That's Star Trek. You're listening. Yeah. He updated us that Google Ads is testing a similar products carousel in the SERPs. There are no ad labels on this. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the screenshot. But this has got to be an ad, right? It has to be. I mean, mm. it, it looks like somebody searched for perfect draft because... There's one big video, and then everything underneath matches that perfect draft. That's why I gave it to you. I'm like, this can't be organic. Yeah. So it seems like an ad to me. Maybe they should label better. And you'd think if it was organic, these similar products would be different brands, right? Like, But these are all the same brands, so it just seems like a cool ad thing. We have tales from PBC Reddit. Um, this one is posted from Harry Potter is Dolphin. Great handle. <laughs> And Harry Potter said, is it possible to become a Facebook ads expert in three months? I've seen people recommending that instead of spending money on courses, I should spend money in running ads. (laughs) How much money would be necessary for me to invest in order to get good at them? Would, for instance, $1,000 be enough? (laughs) Did you just put this in because it was funny? I couldn't tell. Okay, I couldn't tell if you were like liking the responses because people were saying, start by reading Facebook blueprint, familiarize yourself. Focus on copywriting and then start spending money on ads. But Harry Potter wrote back and said, I'm not actually looking to sell any product of mine, but rather offer Facebook ads 
as a done for you service once I master them, which may take years, but it just happens that over the next three months, I would be able to commit around eight hours a day to easily study them. So I really love that hustle, Harry Potter, but like, just get out, don't do it, okay? <laughs> Take it. <laughs> and it's another reason to like vet who you hire. What right? is like, this? You're just going to spend money on fake ads to try promoting to. Promoting your services while you learn about the services that you're promoting. I got incepted trying to figure out what Harry Potter was doing. <laughs> that right is here. what the dolphin <laughs> is up to. He's not Harry Potter yes. at all. He's in your He's family. He's got a thousand got a USD to this, 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 learn about Facebook ads while promoting himself as the master. I, Unbelievable. I mean, I would click on that. Yeah. yeah. Let's cost this dolphin some money. I can respect the hustle, but just more than anything, Harry Potter, don't mess around with Facebook. Get out of there. You don't want to be dealing with that. Okay? No. That's my biggest Harry thing. Potter has no idea what you've been through, Shep, with Facebook support. <laughs> Go uh, play Fiddlesticks or whatever you play. What is the game they play? Quidditch. 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 Same thing. <laughs> I don't know. It's a made up game. <laughs> People really play it. <laughs> I know, it's strange. People don't have magic brooms. They just walk around with a broom. It's true. Between their legs. And then yeah. they play Quidditch, yeah. I've That's seen called it. being a witch. And Look you know up. the snitch, the thing? It's a person in a gold outfit. I know too much about this. We should move on. Yeah, yeah right. ratting on criminals. Okay, <laughs> Is this on. your sport? <laughs> mm. I am a sporty girly. We have a special paid ICYMI for you people because I didn't know this. Maybe you did. There is a section on the Google Ads Help website that has all of their new features and announcements listed in order from oldest to newest. I didn't know. That's very useful. Mark told me about it. Wow. Yeah. Check it out. And Warby Parker was hit by a lawsuit by 1-800-CONTACTS accusing it of infringing on its trademarks by bidding on keywords for 1-800-CONTACTS to misdirect customers to its competing online contact lens store drama. I just, what if somebody was just looking for the phone number? You know, that was all they were Googling about. Now they're getting sued over the, that click. The nice thing, though, is like you should just be Warby Parker and be like, must have been a close variant. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I had one 700 contacts in there. You, they must have closed variant to 800. <laughs> And then, oh my God, 1-800-CONTACTS also said that Warby Parker like redesigned their landing pages to make it look like the 1-800-CONTACTS website. That is pretty extreme. That's pretty smart. Yeah. I mean, is that illegal? Doesn't seem like it. We'll have to keep an eye on it. You know, this could set a precedent for the whole industry. Keep an eye on it? I see what you did there. Thanks. And we have a tip from Twitter user at ready2449. He oh, said... 2448 was taken? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> 1 800 contacts was taken too. <laughs> Responsive display ads now have support for lead form extensions on mobile devices. I checked my account and haven't seen this, so unverified. Mark also said this is old news, but. Check it out. That could be good. I heard lead form extensions are terrible, but we love being mentioned by Ready. Thanks for sending us the news. So send us more. What's happening on organic? All right. First up, Spotify has announced paid subscriptions. Hey, Chuck, pay. This should be in paid, the subscriptions. <laughs> okay. I kid, I kid. But <laughs> if you want to, if you're using Anchor um, in, in Spotify, Anchor is a fantastic platform, and what you can do now is set up specific shows or maybe exclusive shows as well. You could so you could take things and put them behind like a paywall for paid subscriptions if they were in the past. So maybe like older shows, or you can have exclusive new shows come up. And the coolest thing about it is there's no annual fees or platform fees until 2023. So you get everything that people pay minus the transaction costs, and then after 2023. Uh, there's only a 5% fee, which is super smart because it looks really easy. You can use it on Spotify and other platforms. Um, and there's another reason why whenever anybody, like clients come to us and ask what they should, what platform, um, if, if people ask on Twitter, it ain't, there's nothing better than Anchor at the moment. It is so easy to use. You can do that. And then I didn't even know there was a, a screen in there. There's listener support now. I didn't even think they made a big deal out of that. But you could just ask for general listener support as well if you don't want to actually run ads or anything. That's so nice. um, again, just another cool thing you could do for subscriptions. If say we wanted to do like just the hack 
and have that and it's behind a subscription, we could do that with Anchor. I don't know who would pay for that. Nobody. Nobody. (laughs) All right. Next up in I hate seeing people's livelihoods ruined, but I ship this back in a shipping container news section. More than 50,000 marketplace seller accounts in China have been dropped over pay for praise and other policy violations. Amazon has cracked down on the pay for praise, which is really reviews as well, schemes that give um, consideration for reviews and including warranties, discounts, refund and gift cards, all that stuff. And whenever I get a product in Amazon, it's like, hey, we will give you this back if you leave a review. I'm like, oh, I bought the wrong thing. And it's like all those reviews are fake. And now you have to go through and try to sort which reviews are bad. And if you've listened to the show, you know that we've talked about Amazon is when they they, they are anti-fakeness on there. And it's like one thing they're all about. And they cut down on, on the fake reviews. And now these are like pay for praise, which is against their terms of service. You mm-hmm. should know this. And it's causing a huge issue. So from the article, they said more than 50 thousand Chinese retail accounts have been lost have lost their place in the platform resulting in lost sales of 15.4 billion according to the Shenzhen cross-border e-commerce association and here's the sad part suppliers cannot be repaid bank loans cannot be applied for employees are facing unemployment and the profits um, will be emptied overnight part of that is I can't tell you how many products I've gotten with that pay for praise in there Same. and it's just you can't do that yeah. and you knew that And you should know better if that's your entire business. So hopefully the reviews get better and hopefully people find a way to pivot out of that. That should have been in paid too. Well, it's not really paid. Oh, yeah. Pay for praise. Pay for praise. There you go. All right. Next up and something that is 100% organic is a tweet from John Henshaw at Henshaw on Twitter. And he says, an interesting new Google rich result. Currently only seeing it used for people coupled with Wikipedia data. And in the search engine results pages is a kind of horizontal slider. The example that they gave was Patrick Stewart. And we you can't could, get away from Star Trek today. Yeah. And, and so for this, there's his career. So you can get like a little snippet there. Um, the X-Men film series, or you could see like Star Wars stuff. So you can like go between <laughs> each one of the tabs and see that. And my initial thought is like, Wikipedia must hate it. Everybody's going to hate this. You know, you could be like, oh, what episode is Patrick Stewart on? And you you might not even go to Wikipedia anymore because it's being pulled through. So we'll see how it goes. Sad. All right, next up for all you fancy pants analytics peeps, you can now get unsampled explorations only if you use GA360. So Google Analytics for 360 properties have significantly higher sampling limits. And in most cases, you're not sampled. But if you do see sampled results, you can rerun the query. There's an example you can see over uh, community.marketingclock.com. You can see all the stories there. Um, and it, you'll get the unsampled results within 30 minutes. And sorry to all you non-360 users. Y'all have to get your data in little portions from the back of Trader Joe's like the rest of us. Oh, man. Did they bring them back? No, it's so close. Oh. <laughs> At least got me last so time I went to Trader Joe's. <laughs> All right, there was a bug of top story images not showing in Google search. I thought it was funny because it looked like that one example they did when they were up in arms a few years ago mm-hmm. and being like, oh, this is what it's going to look like. And then if there's no images or anything, and then they just did it <laughs> like by accident. <laughs> it on purpose. So it's kind of a funny look. All right, and we had a joy bomb from Joanne Hawkins, at Joanne Hawkins on Twitter. And she, well, this is just my little note, but sadly at the beginning of this year, there was a stat saying 17% of restaurants or 100,000 restaurants have shut down in the U.S. due to the pandemic. And in related-ish news this week, Google My Business has added five new restaurant categories. <laughs> so <laughs> we got some... Just what we needed. Something, some additions in restaurants here. And there's five new types of restaurants. A toast restaurant, which sounds delicious. That's all they do. That's a, a new category. Pilaf restaurant, kofta restaurant, Durham restaurant and Sig Cafete restaurant. I think that's how you say it. C I G K O F T E. It's a Turkish meal and it is raw meatballs. Um, and it's from all the reviews, it sounds delicious. Raw meatballs? No, yes, there's not meat included. Me. They have vegetarian versions, but a, a Sig Cafete is a uh, raw meatball. That sounds dish. like something Caleb would like with yeah. potato Caleb, salad. I'm out. Yeah. I'll try it. It's not meatloaf, but 
It's on, maybe it's we raw can... Raw meatballs. What's the difference? It huh? sounds horrible. I thought raw meat was bad for you. Unless you're on, like, wife swap. Well, good news is... <laughs> Oh, wow! <laughs> wow! Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm, no, the family it that ate raw meat. Appropriate. They like swapped them <laughs> with vegetarian family. WTH came early. I okay. I missed that episode. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fill in the audience. Well, fill in the audience over community dot marketing dot com. We can't post this thing too much. <laughs> we can get banned. Straight up meant raw meat. All right, next up, Google has rede- redesigned the How Search Works up th- websites and over on Search Engine Journal, Matt Southern, he had an article. The site currently includes data about 2020, a year when Google ran 4,887 launches and search results, 17,000 live traffic experiments, 383,000 search quality tests, 62,000 side-by-side experiments. They are testing over there at Google. And my favorite part of the article from Matt Southern was, I spent some time combing through the redesigned site and comparing it side by side with the cache version. After trying to find some useful new insights to pull from the new version, I couldn't uncover any changes to the content itself. So (laughs) they just made it look better. There's nothing new over there. All right, YouTube has said its partner program now has 2 million members. If they want 2 million in one member, they can get the Marketing Clock channel. Call us. We're actually, and if you want to be a um, partner program, you need to have uh, 4,000 watch hours in a calendar year, and then you need to have 1,000 subscribers. So I think we're like a quarter of the way there on subscribers and a fifth to a sixth of the way there on on sub. Yeah, and if not, they'll just run ads on your content and take all the money anyway, so. Ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's not us running those ads on our content that you're seeing here. All right, next up, Jeremy Keith has resigned from the AMP Advisory Committee, saying, and he was a web developer and contributor to web standards movement, and he's leaving the AMP Advisory Committee because, and I'm just going to read this quote verbatim because it slaps, right? He says, I can't in good faith continue to advise on the AMP project for the OpenJS Foundation when it has become clear to me that AMP remains a Google product with only a subset of pieces that could even be considered open source. If I were to remain on the advisory committee, my feelings of resentment about the situation would inevitably affect my behavior. So it's best for everyone if I step away now instead of descending into outright sabotage. It's not you, it's me. (laughs) I love that. I love that so much. Although I think you used slaps wrong. That's like music. Right, like a beat? No, I think you're old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spicy, though. All right, next up, Google's dismantling its health unit in favor of uh, thriving at the wall. <laughs> that This comes from The Verge. And they had set up a Google Health division, and they had started buying up all these different things. There was Google Fit. They bought up Fitbit, trying to make one main department to like have some sort of, like, cohesive health initiative it's all out now so the head of the division david feinberg is now leaving the company i went to go look and see where he's going to and it's uh, i forget the name of it. it's just one of those health data companies but when i looked at him he looked like sort of a hybrid and i think it might be because of the blue shirt and the hair and it's in the notes a hybrid of glenn gabe and gilbert godfried yes right yeah looks a little bit glenn and gilbert yes and then i'm like oh Glenn Gabe, GG, Gilbert Gottfried, GG. Maybe we're on something. Whoa. Yeah. I don't mean this in a bad way, but he looks like one of those like AI generated people. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely looks fake. He's he like a little because too someone just like molded two pictures. Yeah. Maybe that's up. it. But yeah, that was a good good combination. <laughs> and maybe it's just that blue shirt that Glenn used to have in his, his avatar, but I don't know. Anyway, um, it, it, Google was supposed to unify these efforts and now it's all going to be less cohesive so if you have any health apps or anything that's like an actual it's going to be segmented that's the only thing they can say um, hopefully there's still communication back and forth but we've seen with analytics and in ads that many times there's not between divisions so good luck all right that's it in organic what's happening in social bud all right first up in social this week you may remember back in early july when we talked about facebook's new newsletter platform bulletin i don't know if y'all remember that it's kind of underwhelming How at could the time I forget? yeah <laughs> So it was a closed beta then, and it still is now, though the news this week is that they announced the addition of 25 new writers who are specifically local journalists. And as Andrew Hutchinson notes in his Social Media Today article, this is an important play as local news outlets have been hit particularly hard by the pandemic. 
This is a quote. Through Bulletin, Facebook may be able to provide a lifeline. And when you also consider Facebook's massive reach, it could well be that Facebook and Bulletin may become the key local news source in many areas. End quote. I think that's a very scary thought in some ways, especially because right now this is just like a curated list of writers, but I, I think it will change eventually. But interesting play, local news, Facebook. They've just got to be in everything. There's more on Facebook. You just wait. Funny story. I follow somebody that got, that is one of these people that got the bulletin exclusive. One of the 25? Yeah. The new ca- a Cavs writer. What is yeah. that? Like Cavs. Your legs? You know, they're small cows. Yeah. Yeah. The small cows. It's like, yeah, it's bovine news uh, over in Bolton. <laughs> Moo. <laughs> so you You're talking Darius sports, Scarlet. right? Actually, do, so do you subscribe to a bulletin newsletter? No, how is the no. experience? I, oh. he, he's like, I'm going to Bolton. I'm like, all right, let's listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye. Was your reply? So this no. is this is doing well. <laughs> Congrats. What do you have to do? Like, I'm not going to go to Facebook to read a newsletter. Sorry. Hmm. Well, would you like to go to Twitter to read a newsletter? No, okay. I don't. I will go to Twitter to read <laughs> tweets. <laughs> Well, then this next story is not for you. Uh, (laughs) Twitter has a new integration with their review newsletter platform. It allows creators to add a subscribe link directly to their Twitter profiles. It's a soft launch, so it is available to all creators. If you're um, using the review newsletter platform, then you can add this link to your profile, but only a test group of Twitter users will be able to see it. And in case you're not one of those users, we have a screenshot on YouTube if you're watching so you can review it for yourself. Next up, fans of the apply all button and Google ads recommendations. Stop listening. (laughs) A, yes. B, rejoice. (laughs) No, it's true. No one should be clicking that. And if you are, you haven't learned anything from us. You should keep listening, though. Uh, So rejoice if you're one of those people because there's a new Twitter feature for you. Matt Navarra tweeted a screenshot of new suggested follows recommendations and it's kind of weird so he screenshot a profile for david mclaughlin who is a reporter for bloomberg news and the suggested follows comes up right under his handle and it says a set of accounts that work well with david mclaughlin which a i don't know what that means b it says featuring a b and c people and then seven others and your only option is to follow all that is scary. I don't know who is going to click that. Like bots? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Another tweet here. This one is from Alessandro Paluzzi at Alex193A on Twitter. He says that Instagram is working on an in-chat search feature. The search bar appears when you scroll up. And I obviously they're working on this. It's a test. He always finds these things. I couldn't see it. But Greg, this will be really helpful because you send me so much cringe content. And I if I need like to it. find something. I do. I like it, but I hate it. So if I ever need to find something real and I don't want to scroll back through things like what I have here in the notes, we'll put up on YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) This new search feature will be lovely. I I would make Shep describe this, but I'm not going to make her. It's a very evil clown. (laughs) I don't pigtails. Jess. Greg sent this to me. I don't know how he finds these things on the internet, but he makes sure that I get (laughs) that is so upsetting. (laughs) <laughs> Are you going to put that on the YouTube? We need a trigger warning. It should definitely be on the YouTube. I, I legit send you weird, creepy things probably two times a week. I know. Didn't I send you the arm hair one last week? I Okay. And that one you sent to me via text message. So when you text me, I feel like it's either really important or really stupid. So I, I have to check it. I find it on Reddit, I text it to you. Yes. I find it on Instagram, I DM it to you. Oh, it was, it was the worst. So actually, I was telling Shep about this at lunch today. The thanks, I hate it. Reddit. Shep. I thanks, can't. but no thanks. Yeah. It's... I mean, I'm glad, Greg, that it's in my life, but <laughs> please. I don't know. No. No. <laughs> it's just arm hair. <laughs> it's not. Sorry <laughs> to start sending stuff to me and I don't want we can, it. Yeah, we can make a group chat if you want. I don't want it. <laughs> <sighs> Let's move on. Here is a tweet from the New York Daily News. They say, Welcome to Mark Zuckerberg's Metaverse. Facebook launched Horizon Workrooms, a new virtual reality remote work app that allows users to put on their Oculus Quest 2 headsets and call into company meetings, all from the comfort of their own home. And they have an article on it if you want to read more about it. There was a nice reply that had me dying. And they said, You could do anything. So you decide to recreate an activity that literally not a single person finds enjoyable with a $250 piece of equipment nobody has. Well done, guy. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Why would you ever do that? 
I don't know. It's ridiculous in and of itself. But if you think about what this really means, it's kind of important. So Facebook is grasping a bit at TikTok's TikTok's straws in some way, but between Bulletin possibly being the new local news outlet and this, I just feel like it's clear that they know they need to differentiate themselves a little bit. They're working on new and exciting things and maybe someday they'll build an empire whether or not you're part of it and just acknowledge the fact that there may be some tools there someday that you're either going to use or compete with or completely ignore, but they're thinking about things, I guess I should say. They're not just copying TikTok. Next up from Christina Warren at film underscore girl on Twitter. She says, and then OnlyFans died. And she quote tweeted the official statement that came out. I believe it was last week where basically they said they were changing their policies in order to ensure the long term sustainability of the platform and continue to host an inclusive community. They will prohibit the posting of any content containing sexually explicit conduct. Um, I'm paraphrasing here a little bit, but they did say that it's a community of creators and fans. And I'm no mathematician, but that is not only fans. If they're no, it's also creators. There. Yeah. And what did you think of our coverage last week of the new app, Jess? I didn't listen to it, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the ocean mm-hmm. making sure poop dispersed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you can completely ignore that just like I did because OnlyFans tweeted uh, day of as we're recording this. They said, thank you to everyone for making your voices heard because obviously people were very upset about this. And they go on to say, we have secured assurances necessary to support our diverse creator community and have suspended the planned October 1st policy change. So you can read the rest of that as well as the comments in your own time. Well, the other thing they said is OnlyFans stands for inclusion and we'll continue to provide a home for all creators, which is like, I, I get it. People are like, oh, you're you're discriminating against sex workers and all this stuff, which, that, which yeah. makes sense. And I saw a lot of people were just furious then being, now you backtracked and I lost 20% of my subscribers for this thing that, you know, helps me pay the bills. People just unsubscribed immediately? If you look at the the responses to this tweet, which will be over at community.marketingclock, along with the arm hair video that I just showed, (laughs) Shep, and you heard that reaction from, yeah, there are people that are very mad because the minute people, the only only fans said this is happening, people went to go pivot to different channels and tell people other things. And within a period of six days, OnlyFans has then retracted all of this. Yeah. Basically. I would yeah. say there's also a lesson here that like, don't just pivot, turn, shuffle ball, change that fast. Like, wait and see how things shake out. And the lesson is build something on yes. the land you own, right? Like Greg's you, favorite. We're going to put that on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a sticker. Make, make sure I bought Next the plot first. Yeah. <laughs> I own that land. Yeah. Greg's theory on graveyards is a whole oh, other thing. We don't have time for that. <laughs> we do not. You know what else we don't have time for? What creators are earning on TikTok. But if you want to know how much is enough to quit your day job, um, we will have a link. You, anybody want to guess how much this particular TikToker in this Business Insider article was making? What does she do? She um, posts content about how to look good, essentially, in photos, either through editing or posing. Oh, she has I've seen her. sponsorships with make, makeup. I'm going to guess. Oh, wait. How much she makes and how long? How much per month, roughly? 100K from TikTok. A month? Yeah. I'm going to guess. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy and guess a million dollars a month. Oh, well, you guys are way over. But it was like <laughs> 19 to 32. They had her stats for all she of... She should get over on YouTube shorts like Caleb's always yeah. jonesing for. Her. Yeah, that shorts $100 million dollars short fund. Listen, <laughs> it's just sitting still there, apparently. more money than I'm making, but I'm glad to be here with you guys. So we'll, uh, we'll move on because most of our listeners are not creators. They are marketers. So sticking with TikTok here, much more important news. The platform is expanding its partnership with Shopify. Shopify merchants that have a TikTok for business account will soon be able to add a new shopping tab to their profiles and they will be able to sync their product catalogs directly to it and have a store right in their TikTok profile, which is awesome. They will also be able to tag products in their videos, which then link over directly to the store for purchase, which is definitely worth checking out if you are a Shopify merchant. And lastly here in social, RIP in peace to the swipe up links and Instagram stories. That old functionality for external links will be replaced by a link sticker option instead by the end of this month. Instagram says this will offer a streamlined creation experience, added creative control, and should prompt further engagement, which I can definitely see because you don't have to do any swiping and then tapping. You can just tap. It's much easier. People are lazy. So hopefully this little change will lead to a lot more success stories. And that brings us to our real life segment. Straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for working hard or hardly working. 
I would like to give a shout out to the change history tab in Microsoft advertising. There's the column like Google ads where it says who made the change. And then there's another one for the tool use. So you can see if it was a script, a rule, if you did it in ads editor, if you imported the change or if you did it manually online. And I think that's really nice. That is nice. Yeah. All right. And for me, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to call an audible here, change history in analytics. And we are trying to troubleshoot this one issue with a client where we run one um, specific region and then another, another agency runs another region. And somehow our spend data got into their data. Um, so it looked like there was all this cost and these clicks, but there were no impressions because obviously they're going to a different website. And we figured out and we're like, the one person like, oh, I think I might have done this. And then we went through the change history data and found that, yes, that incorrect Google Ads account was linked to the analytics account through the change history. So change history is your friend, folks. Yeah, I always feel like I'm like in the FBI when I'm in there. Yeah, forensics. <laughs> well, I don't think that Slack has a change history, but if it did, I made some <laughs> recent changes that are changing my life. So I did not realize that you could organize your channels. You can group them. You I've don't been... listen to these working hearts. <laughs> in, did somebody in talk about yes. this before? Yes, that was a previous oh. working hard. Well, it is really working hard for me, particularly because I have clients in there now, which I never used to. So maybe that's why I zoned that out. But it's just nice because we have an internal chat for that client as well as a client or a um, chat with the client. So it's nice to keep that separate and just muting things because when you're on vacation and you come back, you need to focus. So muting garbage channels. Garbage <laughs> <laughs> How mean. Which channel I love. I'm in? Which I love. Yikes. Um, for me, OBS is working super hard this week. Kind of like I was originally going to talk about the slideshow feature that they just implemented. You can add things to a slideshow and makes it quicker if you're dealing with lots of media because you don't have to constantly move things around and add more stuff. But I just found, like literally from the last 15 minutes, you can connect OBS to a folder that you have on a drive or even a Dropbox folder, apparently. So if you're working with like lots and lots of media, like we do for the show for the YouTube, we can just put it in the box, connect it right there, and have it like without having to actually screenshot anything. Like as sweet, much yeah, as, yeah. You just really flip cool. through here, showing me before it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And can I add a bonus? Hardly working. Mm. Us, we forgot to mention our newest marketing talk with oh. Mark Saltarelli, <laughs> Julie Bacchini. I blame myself. And Anastasia, Anastasia Sorokina. Sorokina. Yeah, it was phenomenal. It was in depth, called the state of PPC. I think it was in like 90 minutes. So if you're a PP, the hardcore longest, PPC yeah. here, it's just long form, Shep handled it all. You did a phenomenal job. Oh, and there's you. so much insight into that that everybody that does PPC should check it yeah, out. Yeah, it's really good. Lots of different takes on things because we have the B2B people and Anastasia does a lot of D2C stuff. She uses a lot of automated tools. Like check makeup it out. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. And I guess... We are technically working hard because you did all that and we made the episode, but then we forgot to promote yeah, it at the beginning of the me. show. Sorry. So check it out. Don't miss it. It was phenomenal. And now for this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our cool tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. And is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is another thread that shreds. I think I've used that one before, but it rhymes. It's nine <laughs> it's must- It's not any better this time. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I it's mean just so as good. <laughs> I don't care. I can take it. I have a thick skin. It's nice and tan for me and my feet. <laughs> the thread is nine must-have Chrome plugins for marketers. It's from Adam Hayes at Adam underscore ha underscore yes on Twitter via 2020 BFF of the show, Andrea Cruz. And I'm not going to read them all, but here's a preview of a few. There is the Turbo Ad Finder 2.0, which Adam says only marketers would ever want this. It disables all organic content on Facebook and only shows you ads. That's absolutely insane. There is also the Keywords Everywhere browser add-on to get you Google search volume everywhere and so much more. There's nine total. I only read two. No matter what kind of marketing you're out there doing, there is something for you on this list. So just check it out. Again, that's at Adam underscore ha underscore yes on Twitter. We'll also have the link in our newsletter and on Discord. So pick your poison and check it out. And now it's time for our must read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in depth, so detailed, we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's must read marketing article of the week comes from Lily Ray at Lily Ray NYC on Twitter. 
over on the amsivdigital.com blog. And the title of the article is, is Google showing different organic titles in August 2021? And this came out before the news, but there's a lot of different patterns, how she analyzed it to see if the titles change. Basically, this is something that, it's how you write an article talks about what's going on, is it new? She says it's not necessarily new, but something has happened, and just goes on to cover all of the information, everything she's seen, and then um, a lot of the different changes that have appeared to affect titles, and she was right. Like The first thing was H1 title tags. So again, this is exactly how you should write an article, and if you are interested in more than just my little ranting, go check it out. Thank you, Lily. All right, that does it for today's show. It is now officially not marketing o'clock. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this week's Marketing O'Clock. If you're looking for more information on today's topics, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we covered. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. And we'll see you next week. Welcome to this week's Shoot in the Heck. We're after our famous Friday news show. We don't talk about marketing anymore. We just... Shoot the heck. Today, we are bringing back a game. You may have missed it. It's two types of people where we give two types of people and there's absolutely no way you can be in the middle. You're either one or the other and everyone has to say what what type of person they are. Okay? So, Caleb, you're going to go first. Oh, boy. Okay. So, you always make me go first. But... uh <laughs> Two types of people. You're a person who, on a road trip, super long road trip, listens to music the entire time, like has it going, blasting the whole road trip, or you dead silence for seven hours just in a car. That is not two types of people. <laughs> yeah. Wait, am I misunderstood? There's a lot of different things. You can listen to podcasts, to radio. Are you by yourself? No, like if yourself. you're like, who would you rather be with? I might be misunderstanding. Oh, oh that's, that's travel, travel buddies. buddies. Oh, I thought. Okay. Uh, <laughs> should we just say what's worse anyway? Yes. Yeah, you might as well. It depends on who you're with, but I, yeah. I, so wait, are we doing this as travel buddies? <laughs> just his question. Yeah, who cares? There's no rules. <laughs> it's everybody's favorite game anyway. Exactly. You got to go with the music person over the silence. Oh, I would sit sure. in my mom in the car with my mom for all those hours with no music, and we also wouldn't be talking to each other, and it would be fine. But um, anyone else, music. It's got it. There's got. I'd be so anxious. I'm just like, is somebody just gonna like shiv me in the neck? Like, what are you doing? You're sitting there staring at the road. Nobody's talking. Like, you're either gonna learn way too much about the person, or it's gonna be just so uncomfortable. Like, what? It's like, what is that show where they're like six minute abs and like wife swap? Seven minute abs. (laughs) Wife swap has been banned from the show. Yeah, we we cannot talk about that. No, what's the one where they, they, they pick up the hitchhiker? Six minute abs. Wait, what? what? You mean car, cars and comedians? No. no. Are you talking about Joyride? No. <laughs> <laughs> With Paul Walker and Steve Zahn and Lily Sobieski? Something about Mary was the movie. Oh, uh, I've never seen it. Wasn't there like some creep who's like, about. yeah. I got six. Like, mm-hmm. that's who you yeah. get if you have somebody who won't play music or turn any sound <laughs> on. That's it. The six minute abs guy from Something About Mary. Yeah. So I'm a music person all the way, but I'm married to someone that likes silence on road trips like radio silence hmm. that is so cr- i wouldn't have never thought that in a million years it, it's wild and we like some of the same music so like we might listen to a few tunes or like stuff for the kiddo but so you went 12 hours with no music i, I would say two-year, probably under two-year. about eight of the 12 do you talk the whole time <laughs> you gotta watch youtube no. for Greg's face right like now. we can be comfortably <laughs> silent together which is nice but like i want metal blasting and i understand it's not good for the child I Better know. Silence. I know. Well, it's weird. So then it's like, here comes the no, but fire it's a good truck. sign too. So we have to listen to that. There's a bad thing too, where people are can't handle silence, and that's a bad quality. I agree, but you're going in a car for twelve hours. You can yeah. play the Beatles' greatest yeah. hit. Put it on low. Kids like music. You kids actually like being in a car with music. Yeah. Trust me, it's not a relationship thing. We're comfortable with the silence, but it's like he wants to be in the moment on the road. <laughs> Mm, that's uh, <laughs> I know. deep. That's real deep. Yeah, not always, but <laughs> wow. often. So it's like someone a trucker would say in the 70s, you know, with a CB radio. Don't talk to oh, me right CB. now. Oh, CB radio. That's yeah. my husband's initials. CB. Okay, oh, speaking goodness. of CB, okay. I stole my idea from him, and that's Perfect. why I wanted to play the Ooh. game this week. Do you know what it is? I know what it's going to be. Because I'm friends with um, Husband Bud on Facebook. Mm-hmm. 
Are you the person who takes the hotel free amenities like shampoo, conditioner, the obvious choices, but then he also brought up K-cups or coffee. Do you leave that stuff behind or do you bring it home with you from the hotel? I feel like there's a little wiggle room there, but if if I use something and I don't have it, like let's say it's shampoo, I don't want it to get thrown out. Mm -hmm. So like if I open it up, take all the stuff off, and I don't have shampoo in my little bag, I might take that. But no way, I don't take hotel coffee. People who take everything. No, absolutely not. I don't want a bar, little mini bar of soap. I don't want, I don't need body load. Like, I don't need that. No thanks. Yeah. Jess? It's not open. I take the soap, shampoo, whatever, because I use all that when I'm there. I love not having to bring that with me. Coffee, so he brought up K-cups in particular. We took a couple of the K-cups of the flavor we liked, but we didn't, like, clear them out. We didn't take all of the K-cups. And this is a hotel or Airbnb? This was a hotel. <laughs> And we didn't use them while we were there, but we like, we, I don't know. That's we a took good point. Like, we I took two coffees worth probably of K-Cups. So it's not like we were taking everything. We we're like, oh, we liked that one flavor down at the lobby. We're taking it. It's well, I'm calling room. the police again on you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it at an Airbnb, but. Yeah, that's like a. Yeah. Who cares? Hotels they're... are people too, I guess. But like, it's there for you to use. And if it's something they're going to throw out, especially like yeah. a half used bar of soap. I yeah. mean, I'm not bringing home a used bar of soap, but like body wash caleb no yeah i'm i agree just like when it comes to stuff that you're you're using and they're gonna throw out i don't know i feel like that's okay to take but there are like okay so my answer is i don't take it but not because i think i'm stealing if you open a bottle of shampoo they're not gonna use it who cares yeah i don't want that stuff you put that in your cabinet at home it stays there forever and then there's people with just a million little bottles of shampoo in their house that they're never gonna use yeah. mine goes right into the shower i used it this morning that is that is insane. How do you really? have that much yeah. space no, wait, you don't in do that. Your, on your... If you no, bring it back, you don't use it immediately? Oh, why would you no. save it? Yeah, if it's open, I was thinking like People you think it. they're going to save it and no, no, then no, they no. never use it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if I have a little travel pouch and I don't have something in it, like let's say it's shampoo. It's like, oh, I can take this and the next time I don't have something, I have it added. I've already used it. I've opened it. It's going to thrown out. I'm going to save this little thing. I don't say, I'm going to save this, take it home. <laughs> Chuck it, drive it to Gettysburg, and then douse my hair so you know noble. within twelve like hours. Saving money and stuff. You know yeah, what I mean? right? You're insane. Okay, great. My hair smells great. Okay, mine is shots fired as well, virgin. <laughs> and so <laughs> mine is there's two kinds of people. People that always visit and vacation in the same spot. <laughs> And prefer that, and then people that don't, people that like new places each time. You made fun of Jess, but you're kind of the same as her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go last. Okay, everyone is both kinds. A- absolutely. Prefer, prefer. If I prefer, I gotta say new places, except for Disney World, Disneyland, and um, all the Disney parks around the country. Maybe their Alani Resort in Hawaii. I'd go there multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Caleb. Same place. I think it's just like. You, you, you really like a place, you really like it, you want to explore it 100%. There's different things to do, different places to try food. You got to do the same place every time. Make sure it's a good place, but... Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, he, he, kicker. Jess, what are you? I'm both, right? But you're not allowed to be, right? No. I love exploring new places. However, at this stage in my life, I like the predictability of a place that I know and can explore a little bit more exactly. new every time. But like, I got an almost two-year-old. I like to know what I'm getting into. So I like the same place twice within a three-month period currently. That's a good point. <laughs> I'm same place. Like yeah! I like going to the same place. If it were me, I'd go to Sedona, and that's it. I get it. Like you can find, you don't know what's what's good with, like what's bad. But I've gone to like Memphis to see a Grizzlies game, and like I'd rather be in Arizona. It's it's not as I don't know. I just I like knowing it's gonna be good. You know what you're getting, and it's gonna be a solid eight. And I'm willing to leave the nine and the ten off the table for an eight. Because you don't want to end up with a three by accident. Correct. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Oh, bless you, Greg. <laughs> yes. I thought hey. you said Daytona at first. I was like, man, that NASCAR oh. really filled me up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are all psychos, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>